Hello everyone. Welcome back. This is the second video about arithmetic progression. What exactly did we discuss in the first video? We discussed what exactly is an AP. How can we identify that it's an AP? What is the term formula? What are the different questions that can be asked about the term formula? Now, in this video, we would be focusing on the sum formula. What is the sum formula? What are the different questions that can be based upon the sum formula alone? What are the different questions that can be asked about the term formula and the sum formula? Now, there is an image over here. Let's skip this image for a while and let's go to the sum formula. The formula itself, Sn is n divided by 2, 2a plus n minus 1 multiplied by d. Now, for example, look at this series, 6, 9, 12, all the way. And if I ask you, find the sum of the first 10 terms. What is the first term? 3. Sorry, the first term is 6. The common difference is 3. And the number of terms is 10. So you would simply apply this formula and you would get a particular value. Remember that the sum formula always starts from the very first term and it will go till wherever you want to use it. For example, if I ask you the question about 10 terms, the formula will give you the sum of 10 terms. Tn and then Sn. That means a question could be asked in which you are supposed to use the term formula first and then you apply the sum formula. For example, let's have a look. 5, 10, 15, all the way till 200. What do you think the question would ask? The question would ask, find the sum of all terms starting from 5 all the way till 200. Now, the first term is 5. The common difference is coincidentally 5 also. That means we are talking about multiples of 5, right? The question could have been worded this way. And the last term of this progression is 200. Now, the hint that I've given is that in order to find the sum, you first have to find how many terms are there in the series, how many terms are there between 5 and 200 inclusive. So you write down your basic info that's given. You apply the term formula. You first find the number of terms. Make sure your basic math is up to the mark in order to avoid any silly mistakes. And n comes out to be 40. Therefore, sum of 40 terms is 40 divided by 2, 2a plus n minus 1 into d, and hence you get the answer for this thing. Now, the good thing is, there is also another sum formula for arithmetic progression, and this sum formula gives you the answer based upon the last term of the series. Remember, in this question, the 200 was tn, the nth term. Well, since the series is finishing at 200, therefore 200 is the last term. Now, the sum formula is Sn is equals to n divided by 2, a plus l, where l denotes the last term. Whatever information was given in the previous page, 5, 10, 15, all the way till 200, everything was calculated. Of course, you have to use the term formula to find the number of term, and then you simply plug in all the necessary details in this particular formula, and you will end up with the same answer. So whenever you have the last term, this formula is more convenient. Now, questions that are related, yet that use the knowledge of simultaneous equation. For example, look at this question. The sum of first 10 terms of an AP is 95. The sum of first 20 terms of the same AP is 290. Calculate the first term and the common difference. Now, Sum of first 10 terms, S10 is 95, S20 is 290. Rewrite the formula in terms of its variables. Similarly, the second one. Now remember, for 10, you write n minus 1, that becomes 9. For 20, it becomes 90. First, simplify and then solve simultaneously. So the first equation boils down to this, the second equation boils down to this, and then 
you solve the two equations simultaneously and you end up with the right answer. Questions involving a quadratic equation. Now remember, look at the sum formula. There is an n on the outside of the bracket. There is an n on the inside. Which means, every time there is a question related with n, every time the examiner asks about finding the value of n, it would end up with a quadratic equation. Of course, you always have the two options, middle term factorization or quadratic formula. Whichever find you find easier, use that one. The first term is 2. Common difference is 5. Sum of first n terms of the progression is 119. Calculate the value of n. Simplification is the name of the game. Make sure your basic maths is super fluid so that you get everything correct. The first few steps, the first one or two steps are related with AS level maths. The rest is basic math. When you simplify, you get this equation. 5n squared minus n minus 238 equals to 0. Make a habit of writing everything on the left hand side. Okay? Avoid all these mistakes. Now, this one, I would personally prefer not to use middle term factorization because who's going to sit down and think what's 5 multiplied by 238 and then take care of all the factors? I think quadratic formula is the way to go. When you end up with two answers, one answer is negative and the other answer will be an integer value of n. Of course, you would choose the integer value of n. You would ignore the negative answer. Why? Because n tells you the position of the term in the series. n is the number of terms in the series. How can n be negative? Think about it. Quadratic equation with a twist. Let's see. What is that twist? Find how many terms of the AP should be taken in order so that the total should exceed 200. Now, it's not exactly 200. It is exceeding 200. First term is 3. Common difference of S5. Sn is greater than 200. Write everything where it belongs. Make it greater than 200. Simplify first. I cross multiplied. And I think in these videos, you are observing that I'm focusing a lot and lot on the simplification process. The examiner would be least bothered to go through the very, very nitty gritty detail if it looks too confusing. The examiner would be super pleased to look at some neat working like the one done over here. That is what you're supposed to follow. The, neat, the neater your working is, the better are the chances of you getting a nice grade. Now, this time, the kind of equation that you're getting, that won't factorize. What is the logic behind it? I'll tell you in a little while. You get two answers. One answer is negative, which will be rejected right away. The other answer is 8.84. Now, we are talking about exceeding 200. N has to be an integer. That is obvious. Now, look at the next page. If I choose N to be 8, and if I calculate sum of 8 terms, it so happens that it comes out to be something lesser than 200, which is 164. If I calculate the sum of 9 terms, the sum comes out to be 207. What do you think it has to be? It has to be 9 because you want to exceed 200. Now, in this question, be extra cautious. It's not a matter of rounding off it's a matter of rounding up. Even if your quadratic equation would have given you a value of 8.01 and we are talking about exceeding it, that means it has to be rounded up to 9. Even if the value was 8.99, it would still be 9 because it will always be the next integer. I hope you got the concept loud and clear. Conceptual question. That means a third variable might be there. Something a little bit different would be there. It won't be straightforward question. Something like this. The first, second and third term of an AP are such and such respectively. Calculate the value of X. Now, why do we call an AP an AP? Of course, obviously it's arithmetic progression. That's short for it. That's a short form. But we call an AP an AP because the difference is common. The difference is constant. 
that means the difference between two consecutive terms. The term higher up in the series minus the term before that. That should be constant. So therefore, the second minus first should equal third minus second. Do not introduce any A's or D's till right now. Okay? It's just writing D is this, D is this, and then you equate it. So you find the value of X as 3. Your three terms are coming out to be 5, 9, and 30. Now read the question again. Is 5 the first term? Yes. Therefore, the difference between first and second term, or second and third term, or ninth and tenth term, that would still be the same. That is what the logic of this whole question was. That is the assumption upon which you started with this question. So therefore, A is 5, and common difference is 4, and then you can find whatever the examiner asks you. Now, what if, if I were to modify this question? This I like a lot, modification of a simple question into something that the examiner would probably ask. What if I simply write that the three terms are consecutive, successive, one after the other? Would the common difference change? No, it won't change because it's the same AP. They belong to the same series. So common difference would remain the same. Naturally, the value of X would remain the same. And what if I give you further info that 8 minus x is not the first term. 8 minus x is the fourth term. Find the value of the first term. So you found the value of x. You rewrite the three terms 5, 9 and 13. Now this time this 5 is t4. And what is t4 in terms of a and d? t4 remember it's a plus n minus 1 into d. That is a plus 3d. a plus 3d equals to 5. And therefore a comes out to be minus 7. I hope you like this variation. You like this modification. Let's move on. Something about multiples and not multiples. Now this is the last question in the video. And if I look at the question first, if I read it comfortably, Find the sum 